Just tell us a little bit about yourself more, how you got into acting and all that kind of crack. Well, my uncle Liam is an actor and my family is something there who works in the arts centre. They lived up on the uh, main street there and they, they all had a house maybe. The whole family were there and Liam got into uh, acting and Damien, I believe your father? My Gra uncle. Uncle, yeah. I uh, was an actor. So there's a bit of family history and history of friends getting into the acting scene. But um, I'd say 15, 16, I had uh, notions of, of trying it out myself when I got out of school. And um, I did arts for, in UCC for about a year. That didn't work out. So I, I tried my hand at it for, I've been doing it for 10 years now. And, and is it, like, I mean, obviously, <coughs> It's different for everybody and you need to get the breaks and all that, but is it a tough business to make a living? Yeah, I mean, it is. Ireland's a very small country, so I was like a fish out of water for the first couple of years in Dublin. Um, but now I find it quite easy because it's about who you know and friends and connections and development. And, you know, you, your name might be attached for a certain project and because they would know you from, from other projects, they'd go, right, that could get green light a lot easier than the likes of England or America when they don't know you. Mm -hmm. But um, it definitely having the, the atmosphere of community in Ireland certainly helps for, for being an actor, you know. Why, because we kind of stick up for each other? Yeah, okay. yeah, big time, yeah. And what about, is, is Irish actors, are, are you flavoured a month or are you...? Uh, well, someone said there recently that they don't hear enough of the Irish accent on American screens, which I think is true. Um, and if you look at the quality of work that Ireland is is exhibited now, I mean, with Lenny Abramson's movies and um, people that I've worked with, Terry McMahon and John Butler, there's a there's a true voice behind the stories. You know, it's like trying to push through barriers or uh, stigmas that we've had attached to us for so long, being being artists or being people. So uh, it's. Uh, People around the world are responding to Irish stories because that feeling, that, I suppose, alienation is a is a common thing that anyone can feel part of, you know. Mm -hmm. But it just seems to work at this particular time in Ireland, you know. People are uh, are coming out and speaking up more more so than ever. I I find so it's a good time to be an actor. And when you talk about alienation, you're talking about because of like you know the internet and all this, so people are stuck behind their machines. And oh, that's a. I mean, that's a. Where do you want me to begin? I mean, like, probably the reason why I felt I couldn't be an actor early on is because of that feeling of alienation, because of that feeling of a possible sense of, I don't want to get too complicated now, but a possible sense of uh, malignant shame that we carry with us down through generations, a uh, possible sense of being a storyteller or being any way different or standing out uh, against the uh, what's conveyed as normal is unacceptable. Whereas now you see us in, in our country and we're the best for standing up for each other, but I find it's outer influences that affect us of being who we truly are. It's not us ourselves as Irish people, it's just little barriers, say, in the, in the be it political world or the outside world that stops us from being uh, our, our real selves, you know? So, um, and would you think that, like, say, come from Dungar in a small town, right? Would you think that people, you know, because would, would people have to think of, like, who does he think he is? Or? Yeah, I mean, there's, a, <laughs> there's pros and cons for being in a, in a small community, but I can tell you for certain that the people from here have been nothing but supportive of me. Um, but I suppose definitely in the early days when you're when you're trying out and you might be making your first steps into this new career, your first venture. Yeah, without a doubt, there'll be people going, who's your man think he is? Or who's he related to? Or whose son is he? Or um, <laughs> definitely. Once you get there, they're really proud of you. Yeah, without a doubt, yeah, without a doubt. But you're going to have to go through that kind of period of like... Yeah, a ritual of fire. What do they call it? Baptism of fire. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, we'd all say, would you say, uh, success is many fathers, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you mentioned um, some Irish writers. <coughs> what are people would kind of like be high up on your list of? Currently. Yeah. Uh, people to watch out for. Without a doubt, uh, Lenny Abramson. Terry McMahon, John Butler, um, 
I guess, in their own different way, uh, they talk about where they've come from and what they've experienced. And they're making these movies so that the next generation won't feel those problems as much as the last. So, you know, I think it's a credit to any storyteller or artist who puts down on paper their own vulnerabilities for the world to see and let their uh, burden become their gift. You know, I think that's why they're quite special in, in Ireland right now. Uh, no. <laughs> God, um, I like uh, I like a lot of the I like a lot of the young actors I've worked with in the last movie of mine, Handsome Devil. It's a great actor called Fiona O'Shea, and he doesn't have to do very much to 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 get him on your side. You know what I mean? Um, Killian Murphy, uh, Colin Farrell. Um, I mean, I, I know so many of them. A lot of my friends who are, who are actors right now, who, you know, they're not, they don't all have to be names. Um, a, a, lot of my, a lot of my friends in Dublin would be actors and they're threading the boards and they go through periods without work and they go through periods of having work, but they're... Uh, would you advise young actors to look to England? Well, I'd say don't, uh, don't give up threading the boards here, don't give up trying here. Um, if, it, if they feel like they're hitting a brick wall more often than not, if they feel that there's more um, opportunities over in England, yeah, I mean, we've often done it, haven't we? We've gone over there to try our luck. But in Ireland right now, the quality of the storytelling and the, the, the pool that is among artists and storytellers and um, I see it happening a lot less, so I, I see a lot of actors making a really good name for themselves and a firm stamp um, on, on their, in their roles as actors here in Ireland rather than going to England. Mm -hmm. I, think, like, I think it's a logical step um, <coughs> after a certain amount of success here in Ireland, but I don't think it's uh, necessarily a means to the end if, if things aren't going well for in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. This is great. Yeah, oh, it's uh, fantastic. We have an industry in Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it be film or theatre or whatever. It's yeah, I mean, they're, they're setting up, um, there's Nemeton out there in Ring, out yeah. the Gale took there, and um, they've come on leaps and bounds. I've seen a, a lot of their documentaries recently and a lot of their stuff they've done with TG Carr. Um, they're hoping to put out, uh, to make a, a studio, a film studio in Limerick, there's talk of it. Um, there's also a new one in Dublin along the docks, and um, Morgan O'Sullivan, who's been working in, in in, our, in, in Ireland in the past 40 years has created Ardmore Studios and Ashford Studios. Um, I mean, there's a lot of work creatively for people in all sectors of in yeah. arts and crafts. And if people can make a living, it's great. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, well, that's what we're all trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Ali. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Pleasure. Pleasure, man. Thanks very much. Yeah, likewise, thanks.